Hey everyone, it's the Flying Collector. Welcome to the channel. This is the Mighty T29 from Tacom that was released earlier this year with updated parts. Brief history on the tank, the T29 was manufactured in 1944. It didn't actually see combat. I mean, the war ended shortly after. Only eight T29s were ever produced. The T29 actually has two other siblings, the T30 and the T34. All three tanks have the same chassis, but they carry different main guns. This one carries the 105mm main gun that we will see in a moment. Packaging wise, the box art is lovely. At the top, you get the layout of all the sprues inside the box. Nothing on the sides at the bottom. The two different color schemes to paint this tank. I'll start with the instruction manual. This is one of the nicer instruction manuals that I've seen so far. Unfortunately, they have given straight tracks. The hatches can be displayed open or closed. Some drilling is going to be required. Two manlet options. No metal barrel is provided, so some sanding is going to be needed. On the last page, we have the uh, four different versions of the tank. Right onto the spruce, the hull. Just look at the detail. The mole lines are well hidden. Quite thick as well, this piece. The turret, or should I say the top half of the turret Quite a huge turret. To give you a sense of how big this turret is, this is a similar scale, uh, T34 that I'm currently painting. Look at the size difference. The 
the cast iron texture is accurately replicated as well. Spro E, exhaust and upper deck, one entire piece. I would have preferred if the grill was real. But nevertheless, the detail is not too bad. Sprue M, the main guns, with and without the mandlet dust cover. The muzzle. Sprue J, the other half of the turret. The mandlet dust cover, hatches, exterior handles, machine gun, Look at the detail on the hatch. Even the spring coil is visible. Sprue hatch. The front armor. More hatches. Some tools. Suspension parts. Sprue G, side skirts, gearbox. This tank has to be displayed with the side skirts on. I'll explain why later. Sprue C, the itsy bitsy stuff, road wheels, sprockets, suspension parts. Sprue L, the tracks. Remember when I said the side skirts must be fitted on this tank? Notice this long piece here. It's straight. Completely straight. Which isn't exactly realistic because in the real world, tracks have some form of slack. Let me give you an example. So this is a 48 scale IS-2 that I built several years ago. See the difference in the tracks? It is a lot more realistic when tracks have slack. So you are going to have to attach the side skirts on to hide those straight tracks. There is a tow rope that is included, a metal cable, none of that string nonsense that you get with some other brands. And finally, the clear parts, mainly the periscopes and lights. This hatch piece here, I have no idea why this is clear. I've looked at several reference images and I still cannot figure out why this is in clear plastic. Let me know in the comments if you know why, because I really want to find out. Not bad, huge tank for the money. I actually reckon most people will build this tank without the mandlet dust cover. In my opinion, it's 
a lot nicer without it. I hope this video has been useful to you. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.